If you are looking for something to paint that is not only beginner friendly, but also fun and beautiful, then my friend, you are in the right place. Because today I am going to share tips and tricks on how to layer your watercolor flowers, giving them a sort of transparent effect. And the best part is that I think you'll be surprised at how easy it actually is to do. So go grab your watercolor supplies and let's get started. I'll be using two Artegria round brushes today, a smaller, number three, and a larger, number 10. And actually, I'll be using a color and a brand of paint today that is not in my normal palette, but I just love this color of rose pink from this Mead and Brand set. So I'll add a little bit of that to my tray here really quick. But of course, that being said, any color, pink or otherwise, will work for today's video. So no worries if you don't have the exact same colors as me. Now, as a quick side note, I definitely recommend a higher quality watercolor paper for today's exercise. This is Arches brand 100% cotton paper, and it really works well for this transparent layering. I have tried this technique on other cheaper brands of paper, and it just doesn't have the same effect. All right, even though this is intended to be more of a freehanded piece without an intense outline drawing, I personally can get a little overwhelmed with the blank paper staring at me. I get this fear in me to even start painting because there's no guideline or direction for me, which makes me feel like I'm going to mess up, which I guess is why I often have outlines with my painting. So even though I'm not drawing anything too intense, I am quickly drawing a basic quick outline composition of the stems, placement, the size of the flower heads, some small buds, and maybe even some leaves or grass. Again, this is a pretty rough outline sketch. It's very simple, and I may or may not follow this exactly once as I get to painting, but even just drawing the stems for the flowers alone can help give me more confidence in getting started. So feel free to draw as much or as little as you need to get yourself going, and maybe for some of you, that might be no drawing at all. Okay, now I'll just tape my paper down really quickly and then we can get to painting. And as a side note, any of the supplies you see me using today will be listed in the description of this video if you're interested in looking into that further. All right, let's get a couple of colors ready for the flower petals. Now, something else fun about this painting is that I will only be using three colors in total today. And actually, you could probably do this with just two. But anyway, first I've got some gamboge yellow, which I am going to add extra water to to keep it nice and light in value. And because my brush wash bowl has two cups, I am designating one rinse bowl for the yellow and the other one for the pink rose color, which I will also be watering down. I am actually also assigning my brushes to colors today, the larger brush for the light yellow and the smaller for the soft pink. And again, any colors will work for this painting. And if you don't have rose pink, but still want to follow the color scheme that I will be using, quinacridone rose would also be a good choice. All right, moving on, we'll be using the wet on wet technique today. So we'll start by taking some very light and watered down gamboge yellow with the larger brush and paint a nice petal shape right at the top of one of the penciled in flower stems. Now you can see how light in value this is. It is really barely visible, just a small hint of color. Now I'll just switch brushes to the smaller brush and take a small amount of the pink while the yellow is still wet and I'll paint the pink around the very outermost edge of the light yellow. Now that the outline is done, I'll dip my brush in water, not fully rinsing the pink color out, and dab it on my paper towel to take off any excess. Then I'll use that damp brush to soften and smooth out some of the pink, a little bit where it's starting to bleed into the yellow, as well as maybe painting a few light lines of color like veins down the flower petal. I might then add a touch more color here at the base of the petal to add a hint of darkness and shading. 
then we're ready to repeat this process over again. So I'll switch back to the larger brush, getting some of this wet, light yellow color for the base first. And as a tip, to help keep this color light, sometimes after I've got the color in my brush, I actually dip it in the water afterwards, which dilutes the color even more. In fact, you can do this without any base color at all and just use pure water. And then you add the outline color. I just personally really love the combination of yellow and pink flowers. So that's what I chose to do today. From this point, we'll continue repeating this step on each of these flowers. I will be painting three petals on each of the three flower stems that I have. And even though I did have a rough outline for my flower heads, I'm really just using that as a guide. I am not following it exactly. I paint each petal as I go to make it fit with what's already there. Also, as you paint these first three petals on each flower, keep them from touching the other petals too much. Leave a small space in between them for more petals to come later. If you are enjoying and finding this tutorial helpful so far, I hope you'll consider subscribing so you can receive weekly painting tips that will help elevate your art skills to new heights. All right, now that we've got three petals on each flower, let's paint the heads of the buds using that same technique.
Excellent job. The first layer to all of our flowers is now done. And now comes the fun part that really brings these flowers to life. But before moving on, make sure that your painting is completely dry. That is one of the keys to creating a layering effect. The first layer of the paint must be dry or else the layers will blend together. Now let's paint the second layer of petals on these flowers. So we'll actually be using the exact same technique as we did for the first layer. We will be painting three more petals on each of these open flowers, two of which will be painted in between the first petals, covering the crack and even slightly overlapping the under petals. And then I'll paint a third petal nearer to the bottom of the flower. Now, when we get to the second layer of the buds, you can paint one shape that mimics the first shape, only just more off to the side, or you can paint two smaller shapes that cover each side of the bud, like I'm doing on this one here. I think I'll do a little bit of both just to give it some variety. All right, now that is actually it for the flower heads. All we have left to do is add in the greenery. So let's mix up some green colors on our tray here. Now I'm going to make my greens for this painting very cohesive to the colors I've already got by actually just adding green to the colors that I already have on my tray. So I'll take some sap green and mix it with my gamboge for a warm yellow green. Then I'll put some sap green down next to my rose pink and start blending in some of the pink and the green together for a darker warm green color. Then using my small brush, I'll paint a little bit of the darker green right at the base of the flower head, and then I'll move down the stem to the bottom of the page, going around any flower petals that might happen to be in the way. And again, even though I have lines drawn for a guide, I will paint these how they flow or how they look best, whether that's with the lines or not. Also, as a side note, when I paint these stems, you'll notice that I often move my whole arm downward to create the line rather than just moving my wrist.
Moving on to the leaves at the base of the flowers, I'll start these out by painting it with the yellow green first. And then while that paint is still wet, I'll add touches of the darker green to create variety and give the look of shadow. Now, someone asked me recently for some tips on painting the greenery at the end of a painting. She said that she had painted some beautiful flowers and then she felt like she messed up her painting when trying to add the greenery in. And let me tell you, I've done the same thing. So a couple of things to keep in mind when adding in the greenery. If you're unsure of how a leaf or a blade or a stem is going to look, as I said earlier, lightly pencil it in to get the feeling of it. Pencil can easily be erased and changed, but watercolor paint, not so much. Draw a quick line for placement, size, length, width, etc. Then take a step back and look at it. See if it looks the way you want. Then make adjustments if you need to before you paint them in. Another thing that I've learned is often less is more. Know when to quit. Be careful not to overdo the greenery by putting too much in there. The greenery should be an accent to the flowers. They should not overpower them or become the main focus of the picture. Less is more. Have enough greenery to get the idea across, but let the flowers be the main feature. I recommend painting just a few leaves in your picture, then step back Take a look at the painting as a whole. You can even walk away from it for a little bit and come back to it later with fresh eyes to see what's missing. Sometimes it even helps to take a picture of your work. Sometimes a different perspective is all that you need to tell if you've got enough or if you need to add more. And that's it for our lovely layered watercolor flowers. These are really fun and easy to do and I hope you enjoy today's tutorial. I hope that you'll try this technique using different color combinations as well. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.